So Gemini 3 just came out today, so we're gonna skip the intro and just hop straight into it and start looking at how this brand new model from Google actually compares to the other big players in the market, namely Sonnet 4.5 and OpenAI's GPT 5.1. So here's a look at the benchmarks, and I know benchmarks aren't real life, but they give us some quantifiable standard where we can compare model to model. Now, it ran it against 20 tests. We're looking at stuff like math, science, reasoning, coding, et cetera. And we got Gemini 3 Pro in the blue compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro, Sonnet 4.5, and GPT 5.1. And out of the 20 tests, Gemini 3 Pro was the highest ranked model in 19 out of 20. Now, the only test where it didn't come out on top was the SWE Bench Verified test. It scored a 76.2% compared to 59.6 in the Pro 2.5 model, so 17% jump from model to model. And the winner in this was Sonnet 4.5, which was 77.2. And then 5.1 was 76.3. So they were essentially all within a percentage point of each other. So even in the test that it didn't win, it still did really well. Now, for those of you wondering what the SWE Bench Verified test is, this is a test where they take these AI models and they essentially give them a GitHub repository with some sort of problem, and then they see if the AI system can come up with its own patch or fix for that problem inside of GitHub. And these aren't just like random GitHub repositories. They've been looked at before to make sure it's like a legitimate problem. So this is like a real world, sort of like how would they approach this like a human engineer would type test. So. It still scored really well, 76.2, compared to Claude's 77.2. But other than that, across the board, it crushes it, right? Math Arena Apex, which is a challenging math contest, 23.4%. The next highest was 1.6. And another place where it dominated was ScreenSpot Pro Test, which is a screen understanding test, 72.7 versus 3.5% for 5.1. And that actually doesn't surprise me because across the board, when it comes to Google models, they tend to do really well on sort of multimodal issues, which is to say issues that aren't just text. We're talking like images, video, et cetera. They also showed off some of the Gemini 3 DeepThink scores. So Gemini 3 DeepThink versus Gemini 3 Pro. DeepThink is just their like heaviest reasoning model. So Gemini 3 Pro is a reasoning model. It just has that dial turned to 11. Now, as for what's available for you, the user, if you're on ultra plan, for Google, you can get access to DeepThink, but everyone else, if you're on like the pro plan, the $20 a month plan, you won't have access to DeepThink. But it's kind of cool to see how well it does versus the other players. Okay, so Gemini 3 looks super powerful when it comes to the benchmarks. What about the cost? How much is this gonna cost me to run if I'm using the API? Well, it can be a little confusing because similar to Sonnet 4.5, it sort of has this like token tier model where if your input and output are under 200,000 tokens, it's a certain price. And if it's over 200,000 tokens, it's another. And also note, there's no free tier. So let's kind of walk through this. So the input price, if it is a less than 200,000 token prompt going into it, it's going to be $2 per million tokens. And if your input is over 200,000 tokens, that price doubles, which is kind of tough, up to $4. Now for the output, if it's under 200,000 tokens, and remember that output is also going to include the input, $12 per million. And then if it's over, it's $18 per million. And then it goes into stuff like context caching. And this has to do with like, hey, if I have a running conversation with Gemini 3, like where do those previous conversations go? Like, does it take it all in like token to token? Like, no, it doesn't. There's a little cost associated with that. All that to say, is this is a pricier model, right? We have a ton of power here, but it is more expensive than 5.1. About on average, we're looking like 50% higher cost. Now compared to Sonnet, Sonnet is still more expensive, but you know, this is this is in closer to the Sonnet range than it is the GPT 5.1 range. It's nothing crazy. I hope this goes down over time as things tend to do, but know that when it comes to cost, it's not cheap. Now, where can I actually use it? Well, there's three big places, right? The first is obviously the API, tons of places to access it there, whether that's officially through Gemini's API using something like Open Router. Second place is the actual Gemini app, so gemini.google.com. If you are on the pro plan, you should already have Gemini 3, and it's just gonna show you this, right? There's not gonna be like a 2.5 flash model anymore, it's just gonna be fast and thinking, okay? Both of these are using Gemini 3. The third place you can go is the Google AI Studio, which you've heard me talk about before. It's an awesome resource from Google, which lets you use essentially all of their AI tools for free. Now, obviously it's not unlimited, but it's a pretty hefty quota you get that resets every 24 hours. So if you go to aistudio.google.com and just click on Gemini 3 Pro Preview, I'm now using Gemini 3 Pro right here for free. 
right? And then you're able to even adjust it more so than you would in the Gemini app, right? I can go inside of here. I can adjust the system instructions, the temperature, the thinking level, the media resolution, right? There's a lot I can do here, right? It's supposed to be for developers, but if you aren't a quote unquote software developer, don't let that scare you off. Definitely check out Google AI Studio if you're not already paying for something like the Gemini Pro plan. So we've gone over Gemini's benchmarks, how much it costs, where you can use it. Now let's actually put it to the test against some of the other big players on the market. Now, if you head over to Twitter right now, you're gonna see a bunch of posts of people showing off the sort of things they've built inside of Gemini already. So I figured, let's try to copy them, see how it actually works for us, and then see how things like Sonnet and 5.1 compare. So right here, we have a 3D Lego editor. So I thought, let's start with that one. So I went to Gemini 3, I opened it up in canvas mode, and I just said, create me a 3D Lego editor. This is a six word prompt. I gave it essentially no guidelines, and this is what it came up with. So I created this 3D app for us. I can zoom in, zoom out. I can build different Legos. I can switch the colors, right? I can even paint them different colors if I don't like them. I can delete the Legos too, go into the delete and mess with them. What it can't do is I'm not able to actually build them on top of one another, I don't think. But for a one-shot prompt, you know, six letters, six words rather, it did pretty good. Now compare that to Sonnet ran it several different times, really tried to get it to work, and just repeatedly and repeatedly, repeatedly ran into errors, right? I couldn't even get it off the ground using Sonnet 4.5. Now with 5.1, it could never actually get something to load. We just kept hitting error after error, and unfortunately, we were pretty much stuck on this screen the entire time. So for our second test, we did the opposite approach. We have a much more detailed prompt here. And what we're doing is we're looking at this like Stonehenge Explorer app, right? And I want a specific UI with specific controls where I can play with things like the sun azimuth and like the wind effects, right? And we get what you see here. Well, that zooms in very quickly, but I can change the sun azimuth, right? You can see how it messes with the shadows, the sun elevation, the grass wind, right? You can actually tell that the wind is blowing the grass versus not blowing it at all. And I can kind of zoom in and out and sort of change my angles, right? Whoa, pretty cool, right? You know, work on that zoom. Now let's see how the other ones fared in creating something like this. So Sonnet, again, did well when it came to the actual UI, but like in terms of actually getting this to work, it looks like it created something when I mess with the zoom, but for all intents and purposes, this doesn't work at all. When it came to 5.1, again, I tried to have it fix its errors several times. It got the UI like slider pretty much the way we wanted it up here. But the issue was it just was never able to actually render any part of the 3D application, right? We were never able to see Stonehenge. We just got the black screen. So that's the really quick first day overview of Gemini 3. I'm really excited for this model because I loved 2.5 Pro. It was my favorite model, honestly, all the way until it got replaced, even if it got leapfrogged by some of the other big players along the way. So I'm really excited to use this more and more, especially some of my AI agents and automations. So let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, I'll see you around.